Hello and welcome to the Smarter Tech Podcast. I'm here with you're you're the first guest I had on three time, Alex. Congratulations. That's a uh, I don't know the, if that's such a big achievement, but I'm excited to have you on for a third time. Um, Alex Torvana from um, well, but you you're gonna tell us that. Uh, what's your background? And I know you're associated with uh, well, there's different names, but Drink HRW and someone who is part of the invention of the. Um, let's say the tablet to create hydrogen rich water. And that's part of the reason I wanted to, to have you on today. Yeah. I'm um, glad to be back. Um, we've had a couple, you know, really fine conversations. So and man, it's been a couple of years, so good to be back. Um, yeah. So I, I am the primary inventor of the, the open cup hydrogen tablet. Um, you see that drink HRW and other brands as well. Um, you know, I license it all over the world. Um, I'm involved uh, pretty heavily in the research side of that and the R&D side of making different tablets. So there is, a, you know, standard tablets that a lot of brands have, and then other brands have um, unique tablets, custom tablets that serve very specific benefits um, that usually have an additional ingredient added, you know, on top of just... Oh, okay. Just I wasn't aware. Of okay. Yeah. But um, yeah... It well, I guess that's part of my question. Sorry to cut you off, but a lot of products are available on the market. I say, I go to conferences. Uh, the last one I went to was Florida last year, Upgrade Labs. And I someone tells me, oh, I've got this tablet. And they look kind of like drink HRWs. And I don't know if that's yours or if that's someone else's. Are you the only like there there's a, there's a patent on those or inter intellectual yeah, property yeah. so is it like one yeah. manufacturer and they basically sell all the same but it's white labeling yeah so i white label to to quite a number of brands okay. um the the tablet um a lot of companies uh just sell the base tablet right like the very very specific um uh, kind of similar to like the the rejuvenation unflavored that drink hrw has yeah. Um, say with the Drink HRW brand, and they kind of separate, put like a bit of a firewall between my my licensing company and the Drink HRW brand. So what the Drink HRW brand has done is one, they've given me a platform to talk and educate on hydrogen. Um, before I partnered up with that marketing team, we were having a lot of problems. I mean, uh, I think you can probably remember some of the companies in the industry that were really doing a lot of harm you know, in hydrogen water, hurting yeah. a lot of people. Um, in my experience, marketers tend to follow the trend, whether the trend is good or bad. They just <laughs> follow point. whatever they think is working. Um, so in the early days of hydrogen water and hydrogen tablets, um, there were some bad actors. And then other companies were just saying the same things the bad actors were saying. And we saw this absolutely destroy the hydrogen water industries in Japan and Korea, you know, oh, with, really? With really shady, shady stuff. Like the governments of Japan and Korea had to come down and warn consumers, right, about the scams being perpetrated by hydrogen water companies. Um, and then there was a lot of other issues just on top of like the, the unscientific and, and fraudulent claims that were said about hydrogen water, you know, in Japan and Korea, um, most of the products had no hydrogen in them. You know, the, the uh, sort of a consumer affairs department in Japan tested 19 hydrogen water products and found 17 of them contained no hydrogen. And, yeah. So it was the, the like, far west of really like a new product comes out or, or something where there's money to be made. And just like, I don't know, it, it's like that in supplements. It's like that in like olive oil and different things that I've been studying tr throughout my years. But yeah, it's so I guess it's just the industry was a little bit too young or not enough oversight, I guess. Or well, yeah, kind of like the wild, wild west, like you said, yeah. um, you know, and, and when it's new and people don't really understand it. I find actually a lot of companies, they don't, any scientists, right? Or anyone to tell them what they're doing, you know? So I, I detail, I, I write down a lot of the scams that are appearing on the North American market right now yeah. on the Drink HRW blog, where we test the products, um, test them for the hydrogen levels. We do reviews. Um, we do reviews on how they're making the hydrogen. And unfortunately, most of the products that hit the market have no hydrogen. 
in the you know, like a lot of companies think any old magnesium will do. They'll just look at the label and see there's magnesium and some ingredients, and they'll just try and copy the exact mm. ingredients that that are on the base tablet that like most brands have. Um, and it doesn't work because they don't know how to do it. They don't know the right magnesium to use. And uh, uh, that's good for them because it is patented. So if they did get it to work, I'd just sue them and they'd owe all their profits <laughs> to right. me anyway. Yeah. But uh, no, they can't. They don't know how to do it. They can't figure it out. Um, they send it to a contract manufacturer that is just looking at their formula and just running it and would probably ask them, what type of magnesium to use? We have this or this in stock. And they go, oh, I don't know. Right. Because these aren't people who know what they're doing. They're just trying to cash in yeah. on a trend. Yeah. Um, likewise, I see the same thing in marketing. Companies, you know, white labels come out, different companies come out with different technologies. And they basically just copy and paste whatever they see as a leader in the industry says. And they don't verify if it's true or false. They have no idea. So if one person starts lying, one company starts lying, everyone else starts lying as lemming sort of following, you know, the pack leader. So I partnered with this marketing team, Drink HRW. Um, so I, I'm a minority owner in there. I don't handle a lot of the day to day. Um, I get a lot of messages on my various social medias, you know, customer service type requests for people. Like, I mean, I love talking to science, but if you're asking me about like a checkout issue on the cart, I don't even have a login. Right, to the <laughs> website. Yeah. Like, good on you. I uh, mean, you would, you would lose your yeah. mind over like, yeah, it's just yeah. like the, 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 this kind of stuff but um i want to backtrack a little bit because i, I did uh, we did three episodes uh previously on this podcast but it was in late 2020 so there's um the science behind molecular hydrogen was with uh tyler lebaron who's really a good authority to follow when it comes to the science behind molecular hydrogen and what is legit what is not especially when it comes to research papers and what what is actually the state of the science on hydrogen then we did an episode with you number 25 how to take hydrogen with alex sarvana and we also talked about making self-experimentation scientific again on number 29 which was very very interesting we also talked about the state of science and skepticism and i, I would call it abusive skepticism or unhealthy skepticism and it was very interesting but uh, i want to go back to just the benefits of hydrogen why why on earth would people listen to this conversation for more than eight minutes now and if they're not aware of of, of the benefits uh, what can we actually claim around hydrogen in uh, 2022 as uh, we're recording this sure I mean, so hydrogen is a really um what it's pointing to is it something called a mitohormetic effector, which means it's a, a hormetic stress to our mitochondria. So for those listeners not aware of uh, hormesis, hormesis it is a, a slight stress to our body that we adapt and grow stronger from. So mm -hmm. exercise, for instance, is a hormetic stress. So hydrogen is actually really unique um, in that it, it is a, a slight stress to our mitochondria, the powerhouse of our cells, um, but it also seems to potentiate other hormetic stressors, right? Such as exercise. Okay. Um, so hydrogen works by slightly increasing stress inside the mitochondria, which leads to alterations in our cell signaling, right? It basically leads to, to widespread homeostasis of, of a lot of the communications in our cells. So a lot of marketers fals falsely claim that hydrogen is an antioxidant. That's untrue, right? Um, hydrogen actually acutely raises oxidative stress inside the cell, which triggers our nerf 2 pathway to improve our body's own antioxidant defense, catalase, superoxide dismutase, glutathione. So hydrogen almost always leads to a fairly significant reduction in oxidative stress because we usually have too much of it but it does that by bumping up our oxidative stress acutely so our bodies recover themselves gotcha. right? recover back to homeostasis this is really really important um because say you just tried to guess with antioxidants you're almost always going to get it wrong you want this delicate harmony between oxidative stress and antioxidants you don't want to 
too much of either or, right? We want this harmony, this, this balance, this homeostasis, right? So th this is why a lot of major studies have shown that high dose antioxidant therapy not only doesn't work, but can cause harm because it's disrupting this harmony, right? You take too much of it. So hydrogen triggers our body to get back into harmony. It does the same thing with inflammation. And this is actually the same thing that exercise does. So exercise um, it is a pretty potent anti-inflammatory, what we're told, but how it does this is actually by releasing inflammation into our skeletal tissue, which triggers the production of anti-inflammatory like molecules, which lowers our chronic inflammation. Hydrogen is kind of the same. It, it bumps up our inflammation slightly and then triggers this cascade where, where we produce the right molecules to lower inflammation if it's out of control. Um, you know, and, and uh, this is where it's really cool because we don't always want a molecule to do the same thing all the time. And hydrogen seems to do different things in different models. In one model, it might be pro-oxidative stress when it's needed. In another, it might be um, strong antioxidant, same thing for inflammation, um, for things like autophagy, which, you know, most biohackers are aware of. Um, hydrogen usually activates autophagy, which is a good thing. But in certain models like heart failure, hydrogen has shown to inhibit autophagy where we don't want it. Yeah. So, you know, the, hydrogen is a pretty, pretty unique molecule. And it's starting to make like some sense as to why it can do this. If we look back to the very beginning of our evolution, our mitochondria actually evolved from a hydrogen, from an organelle that was dependent on hydrogen that used it as its fuel source, right? So hydrogen has been with us like since the very beginning. Now we look at how important say our, our you know, microbiome is, our gut microbiome, for instance, um, the bacteria in our stomach, a lot of it uses hydrogen as fuel and others produce hydrogen. And now we're seeing that when we drink hydrogen rich water, it interacts with our microbiome and leads to positive adaptations there. Yeah. And uh, I know Tyler Baron said that uh, some scientists think that most of the benefits of, uh, I mean, probiotics or kind of making certain types of beneficial bacteria, if there's such thing grow, is in fact the hydrogen production that they bring to the table, or it might be one of the primary benefits. So it's very uh, fascinating. And please talk about yeah. the, the misconception of some, some people say, well, I don't know, you're putting, right, so this is just a standard glass of water, I don't have anything else in it, but you put the tablet in it and you wait a couple seconds, what is happening when you put that tablet in? Some people have made claims like, oh, well, it's just a magnesium tablet, nothing can happen. They kind of don't understand the scientific mechanisms that could explain the chemistry. Uh, and, and how is it that we swallow hydrogen? Isn't that a gas that can explode, right? All, all, all these questions that, that people get. Sure. Um, so first thing <laughs> the reaction, uh, we're using the element magnesium. So it's not like a typical magnesium salt, like you'd buy like magnesium oxide or glycinate or malate or citrate. Yeah. It's something like that. Um, so this is element magnesium. Um, you, you might remember using it in, in like high school chemistry or college chemistry. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it reacts with water. Um, we use it in fireworks and flares, stuff like that. It's very reactive. So we're using that along with some organic acids. And the magnesium is breaking the bond between the, hyd the hydrogen and the oxygen in the water. So we're getting the, the H2 from the H2O. Um, now, typically, magnesium would just bond with the oxygen and become magnesium hydroxide, which is milk of magnesium right? So that's approved, but we're not going to get any magnesium in our system, right? By consuming, you know, milk and magnesia, it's used as a laxative. Um, however, hydroxide is a function of pH, and we're using sufficient amounts of buffering acids, malic acid, which comes from apples, tartaric acid, which comes from grapes, um, which, which buffer off the hydroxide, leaving Mg2+, which is just free magnesium ions. Now that's exactly what our body needs to take in magnesium. And we do this so that we get two benefits of the tablets, the, the molecular hydrogen and a very bioavailable source of magnesium. Oh, now, very nice. This is pretty important. 
um, because most magnesium, I, I mean, 80 to 90% of people are deficient in magnesium in North America. Yeah. And most magnesium supplements are, are not bioavailable. And this is because like the bond in most magnesium molecules is very strong. It's hard to break. Our stomach acid doesn't do a sufficient job in breaking it. Like say the cheapest option at the pharmacies or, or supplement stores, magnesium oxide. Um, and the, the population only, the average person, only about 5% of magnesium oxide becomes bioavailable. The rest just passes straight through your system as a laxative. So the best ones have maybe 30% bioavailability, the best forms of magnesium. The form we're giving it into is exactly what our body needs. So our stomach doesn't have to do any work. It's already split apart, right? It's already in free ions, which is what our, our cells need. So, um, and what's, what that's is the amount per tablet that you're getting? It's, it's 80 milligrams, you okay, know, so small. it doesn't sound like a lot, but uh, you take a couple a day and think this is all ending up in the free bioavailable form. So you actually will get a lot more than taking a supplement with low bioavailability, right? Without having to pass it through as a last step. Yeah, that's now, interesting. Um, what's the best way to, to take magnesium? I know personally I've been taking it before exercise, after exercise. I know that some people do both or one and the other. And I know that for me, it's just, I guess I, I could take it every day, but I just found that the, the cost is a bit more advantageous if it's like four times a week when I train. Uh, yeah. But what is the, do we know what's the ideal amount or how regularly we should take magnesium? I guess it's, it's very dependent on what you do. Yeah, it's going to be so dependent on your lifestyle, your diet, yeah. everything yeah. like that. Um, it's one of the, the same things with a lot of vitamins and minerals. And yeah. uh, this is what a, one thing I, I see a lot in supplements. Um, it's wild because uh, for say expensive ingredients, uh, they, they, like companies sprinkle fairy dust levels in far below what's effective. And for cheap ingredients, they, they super load it like 10 times more than what's required. And we know with a lot of vitamins and minerals, um, the same things happen when you when you overdose on them as when you're deficient on them often, right? So we don't want to be overloading on on, on minerals um, or vitamins um, can uh, can cause some some side effects and side consequences. Um, I mean, it's a. I, I tend to just go with the hydrogen, right? Like when I I want to take the hydrogen, I take the pill with the magnesium, like take the hydrogen tablet, um, because magnesium is just going to stay in your system anyways, um, until you use it up. So I, I shift through different protocols, you know, and I write about this, um, just like say exercise, if you do the exact same exercise at the same time of day, every day, forever, it stops being exercise. It's just stress. Okay. Right? Yeah. So every three to six months, I do a washout on my hydrogen. I stop taking it for a week. And then I take it in a different dose at a different time of day. So maybe I take, you know, a high dose only in the morning and then I wash out for a week and then um, I split it into two. I take it, um, you know, in the morning and afternoon before a workout, right? I, I kind of I change it around like that. Um, that that's kind of what I do for dosing. But uh, also to answer the question, we get this all the time about like, isn't hydrogen gas explosive? Why am I drinking <laughs> yeah. it? Um, well, yeah, it is explosive when it, it's uh, above 4%, right, uh, of the atmospheric pressure, um, and below 70%, I think, uh, but not when it's dissolved in water, right? Okay. Same as gunpowder. It is, is no longer explosive if you put it in water. Um, but, I mean, you wouldn't want to drink gunpowder. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, so it's not explosive, uh, one, because it, it doesn't breach 4% of the atmosphere around you, you know, it, it's a small amount, like 70, 80 milliliters that's dissolved in this cup of water. Um, and two, it is dissolved in water. So it's not flammable or explosive. So this is why we, we do have, you know, a couple legal statuses, you know, from the say the US FDA. Um, we have new dietary ingredient status, which means we're a fully legal gold standard supplement on the US market. Um, it's estimated only about 4% of ingredients uh, that that require an NDI in the U.S. have achieved that status. Many of them have not applied; they're just operating illegally. 
and most that have applied have been rejected. But we were we passed on our first application on like a 300 page you know dossier that we put forth to the FDA. Um, we also have uh, for food use um, grass status, so generally regarded as safe, right? Well, so they, they've really looked into all of this. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're fully good to go, fully vetted, safety, legally, everything like that. Yeah, and something to be noted, uh, especially in, in that episode with Tyler LeBaron, he did uh, mention that the upper limit of uh, hydrogen that uh, you can tolerate inside a human body is, I don't know if it's unknown, but it's extremely, extremely high. Um, yeah, so we, we, we haven't, uh, uh, like with other forms of hormesis, you know, there'll be like, you know, kind of like a reverse J or reverse U or a plateauing where say like alcohol, you know, a little bit is good. And then a little bit more is really bad. Yeah. Right. Or exercise slowly or it quickly goes up and then it plateaus and then it gets bad. Hydrogen, we've just kind of had a slow, steady increase. So we actually can't get enough from it. And, and this is one of the things I work with researchers because the results in um, in rodents are, are almost miraculous. They're much stronger than in humans, right? The benefits we've been seeing from hydrogen. Um, while we look at the, the amount that rodents drink as compared to humans and, and concentrations that we're carefully getting in labs compared to some of the technologies that, that humans are buying, and you will see a difference of between 10 to 100 times greater doses wow. given relatively to a mouse per body weight as to a human. So it doesn't, it, it's not that surprising that it's working a lot better in mice than humans. And, and this is kind of where the tablets have come in because we're getting, you know, 10 times higher, or seven, eight times higher than the max saturation point of hydrogen based on, on how my technology works, creating these small nanobubbles, which is creating this quasi-dissolved supersaturation. So we're kind of bridging that translational gap between what the, the rodents are getting and what humans are getting. And we're getting a lot stronger results than other human research is getting. You got, gotcha. Well, let's talk about these, uh, these results uh, to close this out. Uh, I know well, it's been, I heard about heart failure and there's many lines of research that we talked about with Tyler Baron. but lately uh, a study I saw on your website we were discussing right before this about 24-hour um, sleep deprivation and then the improve in, in brain cognition, I think. Uh, talk about yeah. that, especially how it, it compared to caffeine. Yeah, so we did two studies on this. So first we did uh, the pilot, which was just uh, sleep deprivation, but it then participants did uh, the, something called the attention network test, right? Which but basically caught cognitive like tasks, speed function tasks, you know, and, and compared caffeine versus a hydrogen tablet, right? After this 24 hour sleep that young healthy participants. And it found that uh, they were equivalent to each other, right? In, in increasing performance after the baseline. So, that was interesting, especially because uh, hydrogen helped with orienting, right? Better than caffeine did. Caffeine was better at, uh, um, I think, executing. Um, but they, they basically, they, they improved different areas of the test. So um, the, the researchers went back and did a second study um, with four groups, like crossover. So placebo, placebo, hydrogen, placebo, caffeine, placebo, and hydrogen plus caffeine. And they found that hydrogen had a more robust improvement in brain metabolism following sleep depth than caffeine did, right? So it's not a stimulant, but it just kind of restored our, our function of our brain, our brain metabolism, mm. so that we performed better on these tests. So that was very interesting, especially because hydrogen and caffeine work in different ways. Um, so putting them together also showed a more robust improvement in brain metabolism that then you know hydrogen or caffeine on their own um this is kind of what where i got into a lot of the research we're going down and, and therapeutics and some of the brands are combining different molecules together to do custom products like for instance um like drinking hrw has a product called boost which has hydrogen tablets caffeine and a patented form of arginine to raise you know nitric oxide levels in the body. So that's kind of like a, 
a three-pronged approach to, to mind and body stimulation. And they also just launched a product called Harmony, which, you know, we go back to the gut. Harmony is the hydrogen tablet with a heat-killed probiotic strain, right? Now, the benefit of a heat-killed probiotic strain is you're still getting the, the, the cell signaling results, right, of the bacteria without potentially disrupting your, your microbiome. Right? Wait a minute. So that's you... where well, I got to stop you. Heat killed. I mean, that's the first time I read that on your website. I think before preparing for this interview, I'm like heat killed. Are you pre-killing probiotics? Like, how does it work? Why did, is this new or am I just hearing about it now? Yeah, it's pretty new. Um, it was, well, it's, I mean, the research is, is five or 10 years old. Yeah. Right. Kind of. Yeah. Out, but hitting the market, it's pretty new. So obviously our microbiome is super, super important, but what we've seen with a lot of studies giving various probiotic strains, it's just like, say, like different vitamin and mineral needs. Well, a probiotic that helps one person might hurt the next person. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, which is why in most probiotic studies, we see very long list of side effects. Right. You know, some people with very strong results, other people with very bad results. Um, so by heat killing the probiotics, what we're finding out is, is that we're still getting a lot of the benefits in terms of immunity, metabolism, right? All of these cell signaling benefits that the bacteria strain gets without disrupting our, our microbial balance in our stomach. And right? how's, so, how's that how's, possible? How's, how's, What's the mechanism? Is it that the bacteria come with mRNA around them and something that just contributes to cell signaling? Like, do we know that or? Yeah, I mean, it's in there. This isn't my expertise. Okay, right? yeah, I, not I, mine I, either. I would get lost in the I, science. I, I, I was just curious. I don't want to get it wrong. I've had a lot of yeah. fascinating conversations. But you have an article on that specifically, right? Heat kill the yeah. a PhD rod that wrote that on your website. I'm going to yeah, include yeah, that in the show yeah. notes. So and that's another uh, cool thing that in my agreement with Drink HRW, like when we put and like put me to get accurate information about hydrogen, I said, listen, like, I don't want my name attached to marketing company that's just going to churn out products that I don't agree with. Um, so kind of like with all these new products, um, we, we put together a scientific advisory board that's more than just myself, nice. right? So we have nice. different PhDs, you know, MDs, dietitians from different specialties, and we all have to agree on a product to launch it. Right. So we do a very, very thorough evaluation of everything we're launching um, until we're all kind of like thumbs up. This looks good. Right. We're doing the right dose. This research makes sense. That's awesome. Yeah. And I'm going to put links to to these these products. I don't I might have a coupon code. If I have a coupon code, it's going to be in the show notes. I don't recall yeah. this. It's probably smarter, but I just want to make sure it's activated. But anyhow, that's not that's not why I do these things. I mean, yeah, I do some affiliate marketing, but you you, you guys know that, I mean, buy optimizers and certain of these companies, why I recommend them is really because they are attached to a university and actually do original research. You guys are the same. You do original research. You've, you've not only launched a, a, a new product, but you mentioned the last time two years ago that I mean, you were part of the early pioneers of coming up with new studies also. And this advances the entire topic, which is very important to me because it's it's also, I mean, it's also a humanitarian mission because you advance the science. So everyone wins. I, I find that very, very uh, like a good sign that a supplement company is actually worth uh partaking in or, or trusting is if they in fact are also involved with the science. Uh, something I like. 100%. I mean, I, I I could never say market a product that didn't have evidence behind it. Yeah. Right? I, I couldn't talk straight about it. I didn't want to get into this industry. You know, I, I was, you know, if people go back and listen to say the first podcast we did where I kind of tell my story and, you know, I, I had all, all my own uh, injuries and health issues that made me stop competing in athletics. Um, and I was developing this tablet for my own use. And it was like an obsessive passion over a couple of years. I had a lot of reservations about going into the supplement industry. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, you know what? I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it right. And then things blew up in my face with some companies that were doing really sketchy and 
unethical and illegal things. And that's when I shifted gears and partnered with the marketing team. And, you know, KKHRW was getting a platform. So if you do see others, say brands um, that are, uh, for instance, um, marketing things like uh, the tablets and using similar language, um, everything I write isn't copywritten um, to the brand. It's my ownership, so I give access to my private labels to use my writing on things like that. And when it comes down to it, uh, for say like a consumer, oh, why use a Drink HRW over another brand? Um, Drink HRW one is um, the one giving me this platform to talk. Uh, two, they may have custom tablets that are better for you. For instance, like uh, they're the only ones with this this. Harmony with heat killed probiotic. They're the only one so far that has uh, like the boost product that that has the caffeine and the, the patented form of arginine and with the hydrogen. Um, they're so far the only ones marketing uh, bath tablets, which we have two clinical trials on, right? For soft tissue injury and uh, muscle soreness recovery. Right? I did not know that. Why, why, why did I, why did I miss on those? Like I, I, these days I do Spartan races. So sometimes yeah. after those races, like 21 K in the mountains, I'm shattered for four days. So, I mean, it, it could be something I do the night of, right? Yeah, no, you, I, I strongly recommend them. Like, oh my God. Drink Future W okay. works with like a lot of, uh, a lot of um, pro athletes as well. And uh, for, for say any amateur or pro athletes, um, I believe Drink HRW is the only brand that has a sports certification attached to the product. Um, so they're, they're uh, informed sports certified. So they're tested to, you know, water standards, to NFL standards, MLB standards, UFC standards, like all the various pro organizations um, have approved organizations like informed sports saying this is a safe stuff, supplement. There's no contaminants in it. Nice. So Train HRW does a lot of stuff like that. Uh, the research side is more all, all me on the side. We, we have other really cool stuff. I mean, again, for your Spartan Raisins, um, we have two clinical trials for the baths. Um, after high intensity eccentric exercise, taking a hydrogen bath was better than the placebo tablet, which was still a magnesium tablet that released CO2 instead. Um, so they're all very well placebo controlled. And it reduced delayed onset muscle soreness and protected creatine kinase levels right? Marker of muscle damage. Um, and then after grade two ankle tears in pro soccer players, um, hydrogen was equivalent to rice protocol, which is rest, ice, compress, elevate, which is a standard therapy. Really? Uh, really? But the cool thing is it was actually trending better than rice. So nothing reached significance, but in, in a lot of the measurements, hydrogen w- had a strong trend to be better than rice protocol. So if they'd recruited just a few more people, it likely would have shown that hydrogen was better than rice protocol. Gotcha. I mean, I would do both, but uh, that's yeah. <laughs> probably most athletes yeah. would do like a hundred different things, but yeah. it's good to include hydrogen. If I, if I follow you correctly after not only a hard workout, but if you're nursing an injury. Um, right. So and and in then, that case of that bath, like what's happening with, with the bath tablets, is it, I guess it's, it's trans transdermal. It gets into the muscle. Yeah, or? Hydrogen is the smallest, molecule there is exactly so it's going to be thermal it's going to get right through there and instead of like passing through into your stomach passing through your organs before it gets you know to muscle tissue it's going straight into your muscle tissue so at a higher wow. concentration um you know but even drinking you know should have some effects we, we have a again it's just in mice um but we have a cool study that we're writing up right now that uh, hydrogen significantly reduced uh, muscle atrophy in a casted casted limb in, in mice so that's, that's again, pretty cool. Um, we, we have some more research in humans coming out too. And uh, um, one that some listeners might like, might like, and, and this was, this was a study I really wanted to do because it's what really got me interested in hydrogen, what was the anti-aging effects, mm. right, of H2. So we did a study with uh, um, six months right? Double blind placebo controlled in a 70 plus population, right? Um, And hydrogen had a lot of strong benefits, the hydrogen tablets. It it increased telomere length, right? Um, As opposed to placebo. And and this was during a a time of extreme stress. These people recruited taking the, 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 you know, interventions, hydrogen or placebo, 
during lockdown in the early pandemic. Wow. Right. Yeah. And it still increased their telomere length and it still increased parameters of the senior fitness test. So like the amount of times they could sit and stand right at a time. Now this is really important because these people like couldn't go to the gym, right? They basically yeah. weren't leaving yeah. home during lockdown and they yeah. still got more yeah. fit in six months at like an average age of 75 or 80, just taking hydrogen water. Um, other cool benefits that improved DNA methylation, it, it improved like uh, brain metabolism. Um, so DNA methylation, brain metabolism, you know, after the six months, it uh, had some strong trends for increases in like, you know, HGH and IGF-1, which lead to muscle growth, of course, which is probably the most important thing as you're older. Um, LDL tended to decrease, it tended to it, like, Hydrogen tended to improve markers of inflammation and oxidative stress. Um, TET2 doubled in the hydrogen group, which is a, a marker linked to young blood. You know, if anybody has seen like the vampire mouse studies that have come out that when you I've heard take an old it, yeah. mouse and you put the blood of a young mouse, it rejuvenates them. That's linked to TET2. Hydrogen doubled that. Um, and uh, it, it improves some qualities of sleep. Right. And there's some cool research coming out on sleep, you know, um, in, in the near future that's been um, done. Uh, mouse studies done at, at to, you know, top 10 university in the United States. Um, but uh, going back to the magnesium bioavailability, hydrogen, um, the hydrogen tablets improved mag serum magnesium better than the placebo tablets, which had the same amount of magnesium. Oh, right? nice. So okay. yeah. it goes back to that. Um, then we have a, another cool one that's uh, coming out. I can't tell a lot about it because it's under peer review right now. That's fine. But this is, again, uh, an issue that I know uh, a lot of, say, biohackers are keenly aware of. Um, a lot of people talk about it. A lot of, um, you know, doctors talk about this. It is declining, say, um, fertility, right? Declining sperm. So hydrogen uh, improved uh, some functions of, of sperm in men. Nice. Well, and, and that's not very surprising if, if you're able to kind of modulate oxidative stress or the amount of oxidative stress we're getting is just too much for it, just the modern lifestyle and whatnot and sleep deprivation. And I mean, for most people, they get too much. So it's yeah, I'm not I'm not surprised. But um, to close out, I, I just had this 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 side note here in my notes and I, I forgot to tell you about it. Hydrogen in inhalation. What's your current thinking about this? I know you you weren't necessarily convinced that this this could be uh, more beneficial than using the tablets and hydrogen rich water. And I guess question like a, a side to that would be what about having a machine that can create hydrogen water? Is it in the works? Is it possible? Because I know some systems have been sold and it was a whole thing that I've been part of and lost a lot of money on. But anyway. Yeah. Uh, is there something legit that's on the market that can actually create sufficient amount of H2 water? Yeah. So this is, um, I have a short answer for this, but what I'll say, like, um, I think the future is going to be one where we're mixing multiple routes to get hydrogen okay. into our system, where we're going to drink it, bathe in it, and inhale it. Nice. Right. Um, that, that is what I really see because each way that you take hydrogen in is getting it um, spiking in different tissues uh, more or less, yeah. right? Hydrogen inhalation at the right dose is going to be better than hydrogen water for certain things, vice versa, same thing with bathing. Now, the issue with, say, machines that give inhalation and drinking water is they're usually not the right concentration for either right? Um, like that, that machine you're talking about gave a flow rate of, of hydrogen inhalation that, that is well below a therapeutic level. You know, it was like one-tenth of therapeutic level uh, of the amount of H2 you're, you need for inhalation. Um, and also the machines were breaking and weren't giving enough hydrogen yeah. in the water yeah. either. Yeah. Um, so most of these machines will not be able to get close to the level of H2 that the tablets get for, for a number of reasons. Um, 
the only reason we can get these very, very high levels is with the tablet, with the, the you know, reaction we're doing with the magnesium, we're getting very small nanobubbles that, that are first getting to about 10 to 30 nanometers in range. The, the capabilities of the best nano diffusers on the market, which is going to get you a sh machine that costs like 10 grand, um, is maybe 700 to 800 nanometers in size. And that's the difference. We're getting a, 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 a dosage equivalent of like, you know, 12.4 ppm and 500 milliliters. Those nano diffuser machines that get seven to 800 nanometers in size are able to, to keep maybe three ppm in 500 milliliters. So we're getting, you know, a four times better dose. And then other machines tend to get only about 1.6 ppm, which is a max that hydrogen can saturate under at, at SATP, you know, in a, in a constant flow machine. So these other technologies just cannot get the concentration that we can get with the tablet um, to up your dose, because we just don't drink nearly as much water as, say, a mouse does right, per body weight. Um, so that's one thing. Now, two, with the inhalation machines, there's a couple important things to consider. One it is the concentration, and two is the flow rate. So the machines that get the right flow of hydrogen gas are now in a dangerous zone, right? They, they, they are above 4%. H2, which is one of that first questions that, you know, you hear consumers ask, is yeah. it hydrogen explosive? So these machines, some of them, uh, the, the, the most effective ones are these machines that, that are, are a mix of hydrogen and oxygen, right? And they are fully in the explosive range. Uh, you get enough people using those, say someone is unhealthy and they're smoking a cigarette as they're inhaling, yeah. you might get a kaboom event going on. Um, then there's other ones that are 99.9% .9 hydrogen, you know, pure hydrogen gas through a, a nasal cannula. Um, and they say, oh, well, it's pure, it's not explosive, you know, while it's in the, you know, in the line going into your body and then you're breathing it in. Well, what if there's a hole in the line and that gas is leaking out to your surrounding area and that same person is smoking a cigarette? You know, basically these aren't, these aren't legal machines or not safe in my opinion, not just my opinion. Um, I know researchers that have tried to get, you know, IRB approval to use machines like this in North America and Europe, and they fail because of safety concerns. Um, I've contacted insurance companies about importing these machines, and they won't insure okay. knowing that information. Yeah, yeah. So you see these machines in the market that universities think are unsafe, insurance companies won't take your money because they think they're unsafe. I wouldn't use them knowing that, you know, sure. These manufacturers from China say they're safe, but are they right? Yeah, uh, manufacturers from China say that a lot of things are perfectly fine. You know, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't mean they are. Yeah. And then on the other side, you get machines that have a 4% flow, uh, 4% concentration, but the flow rate is like one liter a minute when it should be six to eight liters a minute. So it's still only 12 to 15% of a therapeutic dose. And um, I have been trying to work with various Chinese manufacturers for the last three years to design a machine that's both safe and effective. And I get uh, nothing but arguments. They all seem to get offended, right? Because first I have to tell them, why their machine is either not safe or not effective. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I get it. Yeah, they, they, they haven't liked that. I haven't found a good partner yet, basically, okay. to say it, basically. But uh, I've been trying to develop because I, I would like an inhalation machine for myself yeah. and to offer yeah. to the market that's safe and effective. But I'm not going to just import one that doesn't meet those criteria. So gotcha. I have been contacting every, every manufacturer out of you know, China, Taiwan, Korea that I have found. And uh, all of them, it just reaches kind of like a dead end because they just want me to market their current machine that either fails in either efficacy or safety. Gotcha. Okay, so maybe something for the future. I'm crossing fingers that within a few years, we'll, we'll see such a machine that 
is finally yeah the, the the right mix and i guess inhalation especially maybe for people i mean covid the last the last two three years a lot of people have talked about healthy lungs especially as you you grow older i mean my thought would yeah. be well if you get h2 in there it's probably better for people that have uh, respiratory uh, difficulties already yeah uh, makes sense i mean uh, hydrogen is going to reach the lungs in yeah. higher capacity when you're inhaling it just like uh, one of the key benefits of drinking hydrogen water may come down to the fact that it's going into our stomach and interacting with our microbiome. Yeah, and studies sense. have shown basically that uh, hi drinking hydrogen water has a vastly more robust improvement on the microbiome than inhalation. Because when we're inhaling it, it's not going into our gut to interact, which may come down to why in a lot of models, especially a lot of like metabolic you know, models, Hydrogen, drinking hydrogen water, even at a much lower dose, seems to work better than inhaling because it's getting to our okay. gut and then it's going through our liver. Yeah. So, it's, yeah, again, just different uses for different organs. And, but yeah, okay. inhalation, it, it will be a nice addition. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to grab the bath tablets and, uh, and make it happen because I, I'm convinced. Uh, Alex, it's been, it's been amazing. Uh, do you want to mention anything? I guess uh, your website, drinkhrw.com, does the brand. Uh, there's going to be maybe a yep. special link. I have a, a page on there with maybe a coupon code, but anything else you yeah. want to mention? Um, yeah, one, one thing uh, I know, because uh, we're both in Canada, too, and um, I, I had been on the website or on like the marketing team for so long. Uh, we all know that, uh, you know, American companies seem to think the only place in the world is America. Right. Uh, but yeah. a lot of yeah, that's true. <laughs> a, a lot of our com uh, customers and wholesalers and everything were from Canada. So we finally do have a Canadian website also. Oh, awesome. w -C -A instead of dot com. But if you come from Canada um, to the drinkhrw.com, you should be redirected to the Canadian site. And then uh, it ships from within Canada. You know, you don't have to pay customs or anything like that. And it'll get charged in Canadian dollars. That's awesome. That's a big plus. You know, have uh, obviously a lot of Canadians following me, a lot of people from Quebec. And I think my last tablets, I grabbed them from the .ca website and I was very happy about it. Lower shipping costs and with, with COVID and uh, everything that happened in the last few years, the shipping costs are so high. You get a few bottles and from the US and then uh, the customs in Canada somehow are able to charge 50% markup. And you're like, no, my yep. tablets are so expensive now. And, if, and I want the tablets, so I'm still going to purchase them from the U.S. But it's it's a big, uh, a very good addition for Canadians uh, customers. Thank yeah. you for that. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, it, it's wild out there. Like, um, I can say, like, say, as a manufacturer and then knowing what the margins of the brands are too, like, uh, inflation is is very real right now i mean i know every we're all seeing it say at places like the grocery store um companies are seeing it to a much greater degree like freight charges are probably six seven times more expensive than they wow. were before um you know my my uh, corporate year end just happened uh, august 31st so you know the business is growing but the net profits isn't because our our like uh, our real inflation on say materials, shipping, everything like that to make the tablets um, is up about 50%, right? Wow. It's wild. But My what, uh, what we're seeing and uh, it, it's, it's uh, a lot of marketers are keenly aware of the pressures of say consumers. So even though costs have gone up, I haven't, say, raised my costs and I sell to companies like Drink HRW and others. And Drink HRW, even though their costs are up, actually just lowered the price of rejuvenation for everyone. So this past weekend, it dropped 20% cheaper than it previously had been. So a lot of companies are actually going the opposite direction of inflation to try and make things more accessible to people. Um, because, well, one, it's just a wild world out there. It, know, is. it is. I think yeah. people need hydrogen more than ever with the kind of stress that we've all been through for different reasons in the last two or three years, right? So, yeah. 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 Amazing. Well, Alex, thank you so much. Uh, it's been it's been amazing, and I hope that everyone at least tries uh, tries uh, molecular hydrogen and hydrogen-rich water at least once, because for me, um, I must say that now I don't I don't really see the benefits day to day, but I must say that the first few times I tried it before exercise, 
I just felt superhuman. I saw a vast difference in my muscle endurance and kind of my my resilience and ability to kind of go through a workout and say, wait a minute, why am I still alive? <laughs> like I can I can push through this. It was a massive difference. I can tell you that. No, I want one of the the biggest uh, or one of the groups that uh, reports the biggest benefits is it's this training group of people that do like uh, like the the stuff like the the like um, Spartan championships and the world's toughest mutter and these ultra marathons. They're the type of athletes that are like, holy shit! Like I just keep going. You know, <laughs> we've heard this. Uh, uh, I've heard this from like say competitive runners too. I guess. Um, runners who start out at fast pace right and try and hold pace for the race see prs and, and you know really strong results but then runners that say know their pace and they don't try and push themselves they don't really see any benefit gotcha. right because engine has like a, a fatigue lowering um, we also see really good results in athletes like crossfitters and, and mixed martial arts these repeated bout athletes and what they'll report is they don't uh, see anything, say, round one, but rounds two, three, and so on. Yeah. As yeah. there should be feeling fatigue, they still feel fresh. Yeah, that's exactly what, what I felt. Kind of uh, one hour in, and I just check in with myself, and I'm not in that exhausted state. I want to run and go home kind of state. Instead, I'm like, yeah. okay, well, I know this is this is uh, a struggle, but somehow I still have energy <laughs> or resilience i don't know it's hard to put words on, on onto it but yeah it's very profound yeah. so for exercisers out there if you love if you do spartan races i'm just very amateur in those but i love those these days uh if you do uh workouts or for any other reasons if i really recommend to 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 try it out and of course i mean with all the oxidative stress we're getting from the environment and from everything else these days sleep deprivation if you're not where where you want to, your health to be at i think it's something to consider it's something that is not just one vitamin for one ill kind of thing or one herb or powder it's something more fundamental than that so that's really what i like about it and the science is sound so uh please try it and as and one last point you mentioned sure. sleep deprivation. I, I mentioned that the, the sleep studies at like a major US, you know, public university top 10, you know, in the US or if the world maybe, um, their results are finding that hydrogen is most important when there's a stress, like a sleep stress, like sleep deprivation, you know, uh, probably too early to say, but I, I'd say things like shift workers, you know, people who travel a lot, you know. Yeah. People who, who aren't sleeping properly due to stress, all these things, hydrogen seems to work. And um, my, my uh, how I boil down hydrogen is it, it's kind of like a supervisor that comes and corrects imbalances created by stress. Nice. Right. So it's like, say your, your, your body is this big factory and everything has to be working like an orchestra in harmony to be pumping out the goods right? Like, which is our health and energy. Hydrogen is like a, a engineer or a supervisor that's just walking the floor and going, oh, this dial's wrong and turning it here or there. So you notice it more, the more stressed out you are, right? Um, so hydrogen is something that you take more often if you're, say, training really hard or you're not sleeping properly or you have a poor diet, right? It's kind of like your, your supervisor, your guardian to be correcting things. Very nice, very nice put. And yeah, but not only on training days, but I should double down on hydrogen if I go out with my wife and maybe until midnight, 1 a.m., I have a couple of drinks and then my kid at 5 a.m. is daddy, daddy. And I'm like, oh my God, it was fun, but I, it's not going to be a good day. Like that would be the time for hydrogen, right? And and those yeah, are I'd, I'd, or before workout, that's exactly it. It's part yeah, of life, I'd, you know? I'd take, if you're going to have a few drinks, I'd take hydrogen the day before uh, what I'd actually take the morning after isn't just hydrogen. I'd take the boost, right? That also has the caffeine and the arginine to raise nitric oxide. Nice. Um, nice. I can say that, you know, it doesn't go into like, say like if you drink too much wine and you have a stomachache the next day, it's not going to fix your stomachache, but uh, everything with the head and your energy, you know, when you take boost the morning after a few too many, you just feel world's better. 
Oh, so maybe that's, uh, I don't know if you can make that claim officially on the label, but <laughs> a lot of people yeah, would no, like no, you can't. the hangover I, 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 cure, I'm, right? <laughs> I, I, I'm saying I feel way better. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and equal one, but that's well, good. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. Uh, that's always good. I mean, we uh, everything yeah. in moderation, but sometimes, I mean, sometimes you have half a bottle of wine or more and you're just happy about it, but maybe the consequences aren't so great, but let's go. Yeah, if you can take something to make sure that the next day you can actually operate, that's good. Awesome. 100%. Well, Alex, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for uh, everything you do and for your time and um, for just... Uh, I, I don't know. It's been just a lovely three part discussion here and I'm looking forward to the next one. Awesome. Yeah, me too. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks again for having me. See ya.